the only thing which will happen automatically is going from ground zero to minus. You have to do nothing. The negative law will kick in. You know, from, from you leave a car on the outside, after a couple of years it becomes rust. So, that kind of a law of death is actually in motion. But if we want to progress, we need to work on it. But today I'm going to spend some time to let us know how do I get it working. Yes, I know God has got a great plan for me. How do I start off in a very practical and pragmatic manner? I want to go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 8 and verse number 22. And I like this verse because this verse talks volumes. And by the way, every principle in the Bible has to go back to the book of Genesis because Genesis is the beginning of beginnings. And that's where you see everything which God created set into motion. So therefore, the book of Genesis is a type and a shadow and a pattern for anything that you will see later. So being the book of beginnings, all established doctrines are taken from the book of Genesis. And so one of the very important doctrines in the Bible is found in the book of Genesis chapter number 8, reading verse number 22. So if you have your Bibles, follow with me. It says, while the earth remains... Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Now, there are at least four things in life you don't have to pray about because it is set in motion. It will happen without you praying. Number one, seed time and harvest time. You don't have to even pray about it because God set it in motion. Whether you pray or you don't, this is going to happen. Number two, Cold and heat, referring to the seasons. You don't have to pray about seasons. It will automatically happen. That is God's word. Number three, winter and summer. Again, if you're talking about various climatic conditions in different parts of the world, you don't even have to worry about that. It will happen automatically. You know, Some of us have come from very cold countries. Some of us are in hot countries. And some of us are in countries where it's extreme, different places in geography. But again, remember this. Winter and summer shall not cease. In other words, if you don't pray, it is not going to stop winters turning into spring and spring turning into autumn and summer and so on and so forth. Nothing can stop that. And finally, the and day and night shall not cease. If you do not pray, your day is going to come tomorrow morning, whether you like it or not. Because that is God's system. And this is so important because God has got a law in motion and he's decreed it, it will happen without anybody's interference. He says, while the earth remains. So, is the earth remaining now? Yes, the earth is still remaining. So, as the earth is remaining, these things will happen. And therefore, I want to just pick up one line from that to show us how important it is for us to partake of this particular law so that if you are connected to this law, you will get the benefits. Yes. Seed time and harvest. In other words, seed time and harvest time will never fail you. You know, the systems of this earth will fail you, but God's system of sowing and reaping will never fail you. So, how are you? How am I going to grow? How am I going to make my life better? I know God has got a plan for me. I know God loves me. I know all these things we know. But how do I get this into motion? At one point in my life, the Lord led me to reading the word in a very uh, serious manner. The Lord began to tell me, if you want breakthrough, you need to read the Bible from cover to cover. And I was going through my own struggles at that point of time. So I decided I'm going to do what God put in my heart. That is to read the word of God. So the first thing I did is to get myself a, a, a music player uh, and put my headphones on and connect that music player to an audio Bible. And I stuck the audio Bible, started it from Genesis. And then I used to follow it in my physical Bible. Since initially, Genesis was good because it was more like a story. And by the time you came to Leviticus, you know, the, the whole Bible was filled with blood. Every page was dripping with blood. Because if you see the sacrifices in the book of Leviticus, it is about washing and cleansing and all kinds of stuff, which absolutely made no sense to me. But nevertheless, I went through the Bible from cover to cover, as a matter of fact, multiple times. And I can tell you that encounter changed my life completely, absolutely changed my life. And I can tell you, that was the time when the Lord began to put in my heart to serve him. That was the time when the Lord began to speak to me. And every scripture I see, it became a life. And so if you're going to ask me, what are you trying to tell us? I'm, I'm giving you some very valuable tips you can actually do to see growth. 
It's one thing to hope about, I want to do this and that and the other. It's one thing to have a great aspiration. It's one thing to even speak faith. But how does it work? I want to talk to you about that. The principle of God is that seed time and harvest time. So when you're talking about a seed time, it simply denotes that the seed has to fall to the soil. And when the seed falls to the soil, it begins to grow. There's a process. So I want to talk to you about how God's word is referred to as the seed in the book of Mark chapter 4. And what are the processes that we must undertake to do to see the seed becoming a harvest? You remember, it's a process. It doesn't happen automatically. Now, I'm going to quickly run through the nature of a seed. Number one, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. The God's word in Mark chapter 4 is the seed. And whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Remember, anything that you sow, it will grow. Whether you're, Even if you sow laziness, okay? Laziness is a seed. If you're doing nothing, I want to be lazy. Okay, fine. Remember, that's a seed. And what happens if you sow a seed of laziness? It is going to grow. You, you are going to reap it one day. Whatever you sow, you are going to reap. And that's, that's a very important aspect because seed time and there will be a harvest time. So you must take care of what you are sowing, right? Be very careful. Number two, quantum of sowing, if it is X, the quantum of reaping will be X to the power of 10 at least or the power of 100. You will always reap more than what you sow. So if I, if I sow X, it is going to bring back to me X power 10. In other words, it's going to be a quantum growth. So remember, whatever you sow, if you're sowing the word of God, which like I did many years back, seriously, hours together sowing the word of God, I'm reaping the benefits even today. But if I had to put in my seeds of wickedness in my heart, remember, even that is going to grow. Whatever you do is sowing. The words that you speak, you are sowing. The things that you watch, you are sowing. The things that you hear, you are sowing. So be careful of what you're sowing because you will reap more than you sow. The book of Hosea chapter 8 verse 7 says, they sow the wind and they reap the whirlwind. In other words, you're sowing the wind, but reaping time is the whirlwind. That's what the book of Hosea says. All right. Number three, that when whatever you sow when you are young, it takes sometimes a couple of decades to see it come to pass. For example, if you're sowing something bad, it may take, you know, it may be as young people, hey, I'm fine. All is well. Nothing happens to me. I'm strong. But you know what? That will catch up a little later. So be very careful when you sow in one particular season, your reaping will probably be the next season. And then the next season could be 10 years. Next season could be 20 years or 30 years. But remember, you will always reap probably most likely in another season. So what you sow today is going to reflect in your tomorrow. So be very careful of what you're sowing. The next important thing about seed is this. The quantum of your sowing determines your growing. In other words, if you want to sow this much of seed in the soil, and what, what, what can you expect out of, out of that? Maybe 10 times more? That's it. But if you want a bumper crop, you can't sow this much of seed. You need to sow a truck full of seed. And your quantum of sowing always determines your growing. So in other words, my five-minute Bible reading in the morning, uh, you know, just reading a little bit for the sake of reading. And nowadays we have even calendars where you have a verse. One verse to read a verse and dash off and expecting a bombastic uh, results expecting an am amazing bumper crop it's not going to happen i mean i'm going to tell you straight away it doesn't happen if you're going to sow this much your quantum will be according to that if you want a great harvest do a great sacrifice sow a great quantum of seed time being a, such an important ingredient so if we don't spend time with the word of god and expect the bumper crop to come it'll not come you talk to a farmer, he will tell you, no way. Uh, if you sow this much, I get multiplied 100 times or whatever it may be. But remember, the quantum of your sowing determines your growing. Therefore, when it comes to sacrifice, the amount of sacrifice determines your growth. It's Jesus, the greatest sacrifice, he sacrificed himself for us. And that's the ultimate sacrifice anybody can do, is to sacrifice their own life. And for in response to that sacrifice, we must sacrifice our time, the times of entertainment. That can be sacrificed for the sake of sowing the word. Very Next is the ground that you sow matters. So that's the heart. Your heart has to be prepared to receive the harvest. So having said that, I want to go into what I call 
two important buckets. Again, let me draw your attention to the fact that the seed is the word of God. So there are two important things that you need for, for the growth to happen. Right, let's talk about two sets, okay, set A and set B. Three important ingredients in the set A. The first ingredient in the set A is what I call the demand of time. It is a need to spend time with this process. The farmer, you cannot tell him, farmer, you know what, I'm going to give you some seed. Can you get me the harvest in five days time or a week's time? He'll say, I'm so sorry. You need to spend time in this process. So again, I'm going to make it very clear to you. I know we're all in a busy, fast paced world, but I want to tell you, if you don't spend time with the word of God, it's not going to work well for us. And that's a fact because unless a farmer goes to his uh, field, tills the ground, shoes all the birds away and make sure the water is enough and the temperature is controlled, will he get a harvest? Otherwise, no way he's going to get a harvest. So the demand of time, Ephesians 5.16 says, redeeming the time for the days are evil. So remember this, without you giving time to the word of God, he said, seed time and harvest time. It takes time for the harvest to come. It's not instant. It takes time. Number two, the importance of sowing in the right season. I wish I had more time to talk about that, but I'm just going to touch on a, one particular aspect of what I'm saying and move on. There's always a season for everything. A very important season, a very good example would be the season for salvation. Right, right now as we speak, there are people in hell because they've rejected Christ. See, the point is, there was a time when they had the season or the time there was, there was breath in their nostrils. They had somebody preach like I preach always, tell them that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. But they were so occupied with other things. One day the season closed on them and now they've slipped into eternity and now they may be repentant at heart and I'm sure they are repentant at heart and saying, Oh Lord Jesus, have mercy, save my soul. But the problem is the season is closed. And if that can be true for life itself, I believe we have seasons for everything under the sun. And I can tell you, when the Lord asked me to come step out of Malaysian Airlines and into the ministry, one thing I knew in my heart, this was the season. There was the right season. For everything, there's something called optimum, the peak. Whether it is your life, whether it is performance, there's something called the peak. And the peak is what God is looking for, the optimum and the best time. So I want you to remember, there's a season. Remember thy creator in the days of your youth. There's a season. And the Lord is speaking to you at this season. Seek the creator, seek the alpha and the omega. And the, and the Bible makes it very clear. Watchfulness of the season. Don't miss your time. If you miss your time, God is gracious. But again, you'll have trouble because you missed it. Talk to somebody who missed the train. You know, they rushed to this railway station. And I said, man, the train is just moving off the platform. You know what happens? It's just a train. But their plans, then their purposes, their meetings, their agenda, everything goes haywire. Talk about somebody who missed a flight at the airport. Their meetings are canceled. A lot of problems take place because of one missing one flight. Imagine God's doors are open. If you miss it, you missed it. Make use of the season. Don't miss your time. You are young and the Bible admonishes you to seek the Lord while you are young. Praise God. Right. Now, number three important ingredient that you need in the first set of instructions, you need patience. And that's a very important virtue. Today, people have no patience. We are in the microwave age. We are in the jet age. Everything has to happen like this. I want my meals like this. I want my microwave coffee in a minute, which is fine, which is good. Uh, we want to reach people faster, which is fantastic. But in this area of growth, you can't short circuit patience. You need to be patient. You know why? In patience, you begin to grow. As a matter of fact, James 1 verse 4 says, let patience have her good work or a perfect work. That means patience is actually working on me. The Bible says, let patience have it's perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Can you beat that? That's a powerful word. You will lack nothing only if you have patience. You see, even the Lord God Almighty, Galatians 4.4 4 says, In the fullness of times, God sent his son. In other words, the Lord was patient after man's sin in the book of Genesis. More, 4,000 years passed and then he sends his son at the right time. He was patient to even adhere to chronological time to send his son to redeem us. So my friend, patience is very important. Learn to be patient. And it is so important that we learn this virtue 
of patients because you ask the farmer again farmer can you short circuit the process and give me a harvest in a week's time he's going to say impossible impossible all that is possible with a microwave oven but it's not possible with the word you need to put the word let the word grow and let it bring forth its harvest you need patience all right having said that we need to go to what i call the second bucket there are two the first bucket as i made a mention is the demand of time the watchfulness of the season and also the necessity of patience but what you need more than a strategy is three important things which are the tools to make the strategy work the first thing you need is the seed the second thing you need is the sower and the third thing that you need is the heart or the soil very important things now without any one you can't get a harvest for example suppose i have the seed and i don't have a sower but i have the ground who's going to sow the seed so again there's no growth suppose i have the sower and i have the ground but i don't have the seed again there's no growth so my point is all these three things must be available to us so what is the seed seed is the word of god number 2 you need to have the sower who are the sower the master sower is the holy spirit he sows the word in our hearts but we come under the jurisdiction of the holy spirit so i basically i am a spiritual sower we are all spiritual sowers sowing into your life so we take god's word we kind of package them and we give it to you and so basically we are sowers you have the word you have the master sower the holy spirit and the third thing of course is the ground the ground is is the heart of a human being your heart and my heart and if i decide myself i'm not going to get this word in my heart i'm not interested though the word has got power the word does not bring forth results because it's afar from our heart listen very carefully okay so there's something called variable and a non variable let me tell you what a variable is a variable is something which can change a non variable is something which can never change So I spoke about three important things the sower. Now the sower is he a variable or a non variable? The master uh, sower is the Holy Spirit. Is he a variable or non variable? Does he change? Never. He is God. He doesn't change. So the sower the Holy Spirit is a non variable. Nothing changes with him. He is the eternal one from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. So he is not a variable. Number 2, let's talk about the seed. The seed is the word of God. Who's the word? Jesus. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word. Is he a variable or a non-variable? Obviously he is a non-variable. He doesn't vary. The Bible actually says in Hebrews chapter 13, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow and forever he will be the same. He never changes. Now let's talk about the ground. The ground is my heart. Is it a variable or a non-variable? Oh, this is where it gets interesting it is definitely not a non variable it is a variable meaning it depends on how much of word i can receive i can process this word and that's going to bring forth a benefit i hope i'm making sense to you you see the only thing which is a variable in this equation is me i am the variable because sometime i get busy i don't want to spend time with the word so i want to advise you the only variable is me not the word there were some seeds which fell on rocky stony ground it tries to grow but the seed cannot grow there's a potential in the seed to grow as i made a mention but it cannot grow because the heart is hardened you need to have the ingredients and you also have to have the so called technical know how as to operate this but if you get both these right i'm telling you if you sow that seed in your heart you will see growth because seed time and harvest time will never fail. I know what I I started sowing the word of God as I told you with my headphones on with the bible in front of me hours together cover to cover cover to cover multiple times because I knew that this is the only thing which is bringing in some kind of power which the world cannot give. I went behind the world for power did all kinds of crazy things to get some power but it yeah I mean the whatever the world offered gave us a little bit of satisfaction but remember it was very temporal The worldly satisfaction is got its very small shelf life thrill you and instantly kill you but God's word it gives you a joy and contentment like never before and so that's the reason I'm telling you that this is the only way to grow get the word inside your heart first of all the apostle paul starts with a warning and he says don't be deceived he says don't let anybody fool you he says god is not mocked that's the first thing the lord wants to let us know especially i was going through some video somebody sent me 
about people who mocked the Lord and how they died. Pathetic deaths. You see, there was one particular guy. I don't know. You must have seen it. I don't remember his name. He took a cigarette. He lit it up. He puffed a little smoke in the air and said, God, that's for you. And later we realized that a man had died of some cancer or whatever it is. You see, things like that. You know, some, some collection of people who kind of mocked God and they had miserable deaths. One, one politician said, even if God wanted to, wants to throw me down, he cannot because I'm very popular in my politics. And uh, this, this particular uh, you know, uh, video says that man died that same night or something like that. Point is, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. By us being angry with God or trying to do our own thing. See, God is not mocked. He's big. He's huge. He's mighty. And the very fact that he even comes to our level is mind-blowing. He comes to our level and tries to negotiate with us. So let's understand God and begin to connect with his principles. And the Bible says, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. I like the word whatever. As I made a mention earlier, it doesn't matter whatever you're sowing. If you're sowing laziness, you're going to reap laziness. If you're going to put in stuff which is bad for your spiritual growth, that will grow. Anything that you put in will grow in the form of entertainment. Whatever you're doing with your cell phones, whatever you're watching, whoever you're talking to, whatever you're listening to, everything is recorded by the Holy Spirit. We can cheat man, we can cheat, cheat the pastors, but you can never cheat the Holy Spirit. You can never cheat God. He's watching everything that we do. As a matter of fact, even this, our thoughts are threadbare before him. So whatever we sow, we will reap. So it's, it's an admonition to all of you to walk, take this life seriously. We live life once, just live it for the Lord. And the Bible says, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. So you can sow. To the spirit or to the flesh? What is to the flesh? Carnal things, worldly things. You keep sowing to the flesh, you will reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, spiritual things, what is spiritual? The word of God is spiritual. If you begin to sow the word of God in your heart, he says, out of the spirit, reap life everlasting. So the question is, do you want to reap corruption or, or you want to reap life everlasting? And I am telling you, I advise you to go to for life everlasting. Nothing like life everlasting. Jesus forever with the Lord and not only wait for heaven for us to go to heaven but when you accept Jesus heaven comes down to earth and lives inside me Jesus in me Christ in me the hope of glory and the Bible says and of the spirit you will leave everlasting life remember that so I want to just admonish you with these words which is very important and I hope that you're able to understand what I'm trying to tell you okay use your time wisely you know in Matthew's gospel chapter 25 I'll, I'll say this in close the Bible talks about the right combination of the word and the spirit. You see, all these things I'm telling you has to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit. There was a foolish virgins and wise virgins. What was the wise virgins and the difference between both of them? Both of them carried you know, lamps and both of them looked the same and all of them looked identical. But there was a test. The time, the test is at midnight. They waited, 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 waited. Nothing happened. The bridegroom did not turn up. They were tired. But when the bridegroom the announcement was made the bridegroom is coming they lit their lamps and the foolish virgins found man i have the lamp but there's no oil in the lamp what is the lamp the lamp is the word of god the bible says in psalm 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamp psalm 119 105 thy word is a lamp so the god's word is a lamp but remember the foolish virgins had no oil in other words the the word did not enlighten itself through the oil in the lamp but whereas when it came to the wise virgins, the oil in the lamp fueled the word. So today I want to let you know, if you want to live that life, it's just the word and the spirit. You know, if you go into the word without the spirit, you'll be able to be very dogmatic. You'll be able to, the Bible says the, the law kills, but the spirit gives life. Go to the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, teach me exactly what this means. Teach me. So the word Wherever there's the word, the Holy Spirit is present. In the beginning was, the Bible says, the Lord created the heaven and the earth. Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Bible says, and the Lord said, let there be light. And the next verse, the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the waters. Where there's the word, the Holy Spirit will come. So if you begin to say, Lord, open my eyes to see these truths, that I will use my life wisely, invest it wisely. I'm telling you, you'll be great on the other side, simply because... The combination of the word and the spirit will bring everlasting life, will reap everlasting rewards. So I pray for you. 
God richly bless you and I pray these words will help you uh, to take a good look at what we are doing with our life and spend more time in the word and fueled by the Holy Spirit. That's made the difference between the wise and the foolish. I believe you are all wise people. Use the word of God but let it be fueled by the Holy Spirit. So God richly bless you and I pray.